Hey guys, it's been a while. If you've played Twisted, or if you've looked at weather models, you know what thermodynamics are. Today I'm going to take you on a journey through each and every single parameter, specifically the ones in Twisted, and tell you what they do in the game, and what they do in real life. Every parameter you see around me will be explained today. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Thermodynamics is the study of relations between heat, work, temperature, and energy. In weather, it explains how heat and energy transfer influence air movement and moisture content in our atmosphere. In Twisted, we use a few parameters derived specifically for severe weather and tornadoes. Temperature is used to measure heat in the atmosphere. When we measure heat, we're measuring the kinetic energy of the air particles within an air parcel. In Twisted, higher temperatures signal the potential for more robust storm development. Warm air tends to hold more water vapor than cooler air. And because warmer air is less dense, it rises and cools. As it cools, it gets denser, but this means it can't hold that water anymore. Once an air parcel becomes 100% saturated with water, it gets squeezed out of the air and falls to the ground as rain. But how can we predict what air mass is going to condense at what point? This leads us to our next parameter, the dew point. The dew point is the temperature at which air must be cooled at constant pressure to become saturated with water vapor. Dew point is a better measure of moisture content than relative humidity. While dew point tells us when water vapor will condense, relative humidity compares the amount of water vapor to the total possible amount of water vapor in an air parcel. I don't want to spend too much time on temperature and dew point, so let's move on to the next parameter. Surely you've heard of this one, as it's used very commonly across all storm chasing games and in real life weather forecasting. CAPE, or Convective Available Potential Energy, represents the energy available for convective development. As air parcels get warmer and less dense than the surrounding environment, the air parcels rise into cooler air. CAPE is a measure of the energy gained as the air parcel rises. Meteorologists use CAPE to forecast the potential for severe storms and tornadoes. Higher CAPE values suggest more explosivity in storm development. There are many different types of CAPE, and only a few of them we use commonly, yet each measured in joules per kilogram. We can visualize the CAPE with the skew T on the sounding, but we're going to save this for a later episode. The 3 CAPE is the measure of CAPE from 0 to 3 kilometers, or the 1000 to 700 millibar range. High 3 cape means we have the potential for robust updrafts in the lower levels, which could promote tornado genesis. 3 cape values of 100 joules per kilogram or greater are often sufficient for tornado genesis. If you've made it to this point in the video and you enjoyed what you watched, make sure to subscribe and leave a like. I'd greatly appreciate it because it takes a lot of work to make these videos. Also, all the music is made by me and the link for my profile on SoundCloud is in the description. Now, on to our next parameter.
lapse rates. Lapse rates are usually measured between 0 and 3 and 3 to 6 kilometers. Lapse rates represent the change in temperature with height in the atmosphere. It's measured in Celsius per kilometer, representing the average change of the temperature as we go up in the atmosphere. A positive lapse rate signals decreasing temperatures with height, while a negative lapse rate signals increasing temperatures, or an inversion. Since the parcel of air doesn't cool as quickly as the air around it, once it hits that inversion, it stops rising. When we see this in the 0 to 3 km range, we call it the cap, or the convective inhibition. Being able to point out negative lapse rates is very helpful because that shows us where stable air is present in the atmosphere. Steeper lapse rates in the upper atmosphere can influence lightning and hail size, we see this in Twisted as well. PWAT, or precipitable water, is a measure of water held in the atmosphere. Higher values of water loaded in the atmosphere signal that storms have the potential to unleash more rainfall, but not necessarily that they will. In Twisted, there is a direct correlation between the PWAT and the amount of rain precipitated from a storm. In real life, it's actually about the amount of water loaded, but in Twisted, it literally boils down to how much rain is falling in these storms. Relative Humidity There's two relative humidity values in Twisted, the surface relative humidity and the 500 millibar relative humidity. Both of these have an effect on the RFD's raininess, as well as the amount of dust kicked up by the tornado and the storm itself. Lower relative humidity values will allow for more dust to be kicked up. Once you reach 100% relative humidity, it's usually fog or rain. Last but not least, our final parameter. SRH, or Storm Relative Helicity, not to be confused with relative humidity, measures the potential for cyclonic updraft rotation in supercells, the motion that can lead to tornado genesis. In Twisted, storm relative helicity modulates the tornado size and strength the most. It's usually calculated between the 0 and 3 km layer. The SRH actually is the area in the lowest 3 km of the hodograph. If you take the storm motion vector, or the storm inflow vector, and measure the area with the red and the pink, you'll actually get the same value. Now there's a couple of other things that you might have seen on the thermodynamics tab. These being STP, significant tornado parameter, and VTP, violent tornado parameter. I'm not going to be explaining them in this video. I'm going to save that for the math behind the weather video. The reason behind this is because it's a very complex formula that uses every single parameter that we went over today. And that just about sums it up for this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and tell me what you think the next video of the series is going to be. I'm sure you'll be a little bit surprised when it comes out. Hopefully you learned something today and this series is going to be amazing, so stay tuned.